Hi everyone, welcome to Art and Anxiety, where I craft to appease the mental health monster. So grab your favorite sedative, settle in, and watch me make stuff. Today I'm going to show you how to take a battery operated tea light and turn it into a lighting fixture for a miniature project. The main supplies you're going to need for this are a battery operated tea light, of course, a miniature switch, some wire, and some copper foil tape. I will link all of those products in the description box below. The first thing you're going to want to do is gut your tea light. So take a pair of pliers or a small screwdriver and pry the top off of the tea light so you can get at the bulb and the battery compartment. Take out the battery and also pull the light bulb out by straightening the wires and just pulling it straight up. To make the base of my light, the part that's going to hold all of the electrical components in the battery, I am using a vacuum former and I'm going to show you how I did that, but I'll admit not everybody has a vacuum former just laying around their house and if you don't, it's okay. Don't worry about it. All you need is something that is hollow, the right size and that you can drill through. So look at tops of containers plastic Easter eggs, anything that's the right shape and size will work for this. I wanted my base to look like a stack of books because the light is actually inside of a skull and he's sitting on a stack of books. So to make those books, I cut some book sized pieces from foam board. Then I wrap them with cardstock and stack them together before vacuum forming. Now, if you do happen to have a vacuum former just laying around your house and you want to actually copy the techniques that I'm using here, let me give you a couple of little tips. One, when you're vacuum forming anything, Take the object that you're using as your form and raise it up off of the bed of the vacuum former just a little bit. I do this with poster putty and just take a couple of small pea sized balls and stick it on the bottom. What you're trying to accomplish is to allow the plastic to wrap around the bottom of your object a little bit so that when you cut it off you get a nice clean edge. Number two. Always be mindful that whatever it is that you're using as a form needs to come back out of the plastic at some point. So I use materials here that were easily disposable, foam board, cardstock that I could rip, tear, cut to get it back out. Especially because I was putting details on it like the cover of the book that were going to catch on the plastic and not want to just easily pop out of my form. The mistake I made was that I used super glue to glue them together. Now super glue isn't easy to cut or break or tear. So I really struggled getting my little book forms back out of the plastic. So just keep that in mind. Maybe use rubber cement or even just white glue so that it's easy to cut through and tear and get back out. Now, if you're vacuum forming something that is not disposable, you need to be incredibly mindful of any detail it has on it that will catch on the plastic and prevent it from being removed. Otherwise, it's just gonna get stuck in there forever. You're out of luck, sorry. After about 20 minutes of digging, I was finally able to get most of my form out of the plastic and I was left with this super cool stack of books. And the first thing I do with this then is prime it with a Rust-Oleum flat primer meant for plastics so that any paint that I do later is going to stick to it without a problem. 
While the primer was drying, I decided it was time to liberate the battery compartment from the base of the tea light. To do that, I just used a pair of kitchen shears and later on a wire cutter just to get the circle piece that the battery sits in and the slot tabs where the cover connects to the base and holds it all together. This is all going to be hidden in the final project, so it doesn't really matter if you do a neat job here. You just want that piece of plastic to hold the battery. Once the base was dry, I needed to figure out where I was going to put the switch. These tiny little micro switches are great because they don't take up a lot of room. So I just needed to measure the diameter of the switch and I did that with a circle template to figure out where to place the hole on my light. Now, originally the first light I made, I placed it on the back, but it wasn't the sturdiest area to put it in. On this one, I made the base a little bit bigger, and so I actually had room to put it on the top, which worked out a lot better. So once I figured out where I was going to place it, I just traced my circle onto the top and then drilled that hole out with a Dremel. After I got the hole drilled for the switch, I went ahead and gave the whole thing another base coat with a little bit of watered down matte Mod Podge. Now I typically water down my Mod Podge just because it's so thick when you're using it right out of the jar that it tends to leave brush strokes. So I put just the tiniest amount of water in so that it will self level. With the Mod Podge still wet, I went ahead and crumpled up some tissue paper and laid that over what was going to be the cover of the books to give it that leathery feel. Now, if you've watched my videos on the 2020 diorama, it is the exact same technique that I used to cover the outside of the box. After everything had dried, it was time to start painting the details onto the books. To make them look like they were three separate books instead of a stack of plastic, I painted each spine a different color. I used gray for the middle one and a chocolate brown for the top, which is one of my favorite colors because it has a little bit of red in it. So it looks like that rich burgundy leather. And then I used an espresso brown for the bottom book. Once I'd gotten the tops of the books painted, I went ahead and started painting what would be the pages of the books. To do this, I didn't use a white or even an off-white. I used a sand color. And I like to do this, especially with books, because most of the things I make are old. So white is just too bright and new. If I go with a tan or a sand or a beige color, it just gives it that more aged feel that I'm looking for. Now, here's a tip for everybody in the room who isn't a nail tech. Get yourself a set of nail art striper brushes. They're super thin and long, and you can pull a straight line for ages with these things. I'm a nail tech, so I am really familiar with them. I've said it over and over that I'm a nail tech, so I use all these weird tools that most people don't. But these things are golden. When you use a shorter brush for doing line work, the lines get wobbly and weird. Because the bristles on the liner brushes for nail art are so long, you can pull a straight line for ages. And I'm a terrible painter and I can do it. So I know you can too. So I found these awesome little brushes on Amazon the other day, and honestly, they are a miniaturist dream. They're eyeliner brushes that are disposable, and they really serve two purposes here. They're great little detail brushes, but when they're done, when you've destroyed the bristles in them, you can take the base part of them, the handle part, and use them for tons of other different things because they are clear plastic tubes. So it's a win-win. 
Once the paint for the pages had dried, I went back in with my cute little eyeliner brush and used a darker taupey color along with the original sand color that I used to paint in some lines to give that page texture that books have when you're looking at them. It's just an extra little detail to provide a little bit more realism. And then finally to finish off the detailing on the books, I took some metallic paint. Uh, one was a gold metallic and the other one was an espresso metallic and painted on some details to make them look like old, expensive, leather bound books. The final step before sealing the base of my light is to give it a wash to add some age and depth to the paint. Now I've been using Black Magic Crafts wash recipe and I will link the video for that in the description box of this. But man, is this stuff amazing. It's a little bit more involved than just black paint and water. but. The effect it gives is so worth the extra little bit of effort that you have to go or have to put into making it. It uses acrylic ink and some matte medium and dishwashing finisher agent stuff. I don't know, but it's magic. It really is. So be sure if you're into painting miniatures and things at all to check out his recipe because it's totally worth it. So I just gave my books a quick wash with this stuff. It goes on looking darker than it actually dries. So at first it looks a little scary, but the end result is fantastic. Once the black wash was dry, I went ahead and used some watered down matte Mod Podge again to seal everything up, except I did not put the matte Mod Podge on the pages of the books. Why? Well, Matte Mod Podge is still a little glossy. I know it sounds weird, but it is. It has a little bit of a shine to it. And paper doesn't shine, not unless it's gilded. So I used Matte Mod Podge on the what would be the leather part of the books and went back over the pages with an ultra matte sealer. Doing that, it gives a little difference in how the books look and makes it just look a little bit more real. Now, the absolute last step in finishing the base of my light was to just do a little bit of a dry brush of an off-white color over the top, just to give it that kind of aged, worn look. And the last step before we get ready to wire this thing is to glue the light bulb in place. Now these are LED light bulbs so they tend to last a really long time unless they are defective. So I wasn't too concerned about gluing it permanently in place but I was concerned enough that I used a glue that I should be able to remove in the future if I have to and in this case I used Fabri-Tac. Um, if you're worried about it, you can use rubber cement, uh, or if you're not, you can use super glue. Really, the choice is yours. So to glue the bulb in, I first marked out two spots where the wires would need to pass through, and I just drilled those out with my Dremel. Then I put some glue on the base of the light, threaded the wires through the hole, and held it there until the glue took hold. Now, finally, we get to wire the light. Now, I know my hands are looking like really different here. And all I can tell you is, man, those vaccine side effects. Am I right? Explaining how to wire this is actually more difficult than it is to wire it, if that makes any sense. It's not hard. And here you'll see that I'm actually not me. It's my husband. Those are his big hairy hands. 
we're wiring it together, soldering it using a soldering iron. You don't actually have to do that. You can just twist the wires together and tape them with some electrical tape. Uh, however, over time, soldering them together is going to hold up a little bit longer than a taped connection will. So basically what we're doing is we're taking those wires and routing them to the same spot that they hit on the battery with the addition of a switch so that we can turn it on and off. The switches that I've linked in the description box can be connected to either side, the positive or the negative, the one that goes to the top of the battery or the one that goes to the side or the bottom of the battery. I keep recording and deleting and recording and deleting as I'm trying to explain how to do this. Um, so I'm going to make a wiring diagram and I will flash it up on screen for you to see. And I will also link it in the description box so that you can download it and print it and actually look at it. Uh, cause this is very difficult to explain and I'm not sure I'm actually going to convey it properly. So if you have something to see, it might make a little bit more sense. Basically what you're going to do is this. You are going to take a small piece of wire and connect it to the wire on the light that is supposed to go to the top of the battery. And then you are going to connect it to a strip of copper foil. And again, we're soldering. You don't have to. The copper foil tape is sticky. You can just wrap it around the wire, the exposed wire, and tape it into the top of that battery compartment. For the wire that goes to the side or bottom of the battery in your tea light, you are going to take a small piece of wire and connect it to that wire in the light. And then you're going to connect it to one side of the switch. You're going to take another piece of wire and connect it to the other side of the switch and then to a piece of copper tape, which you will then put on the lid of the battery compartment. Hopefully the diagram helps you. If it doesn't and you have questions, feel free to leave me a comment here on YouTube or you can tra track down my post on Instagram if you're more comfortable there or private message me on Instagram. Uh, and I will try and help you out as much as I possibly can. My husband would probably explain it better than me, but he uses all these really technical terms, which just tend to confuse me even more. So, but between the two of us, we may have a couple of brain cells and can help you out. Once you've made all of your connections, click the switch and see if the light turns on. If it doesn't, your problem is probably that you connected it to the wrong side of the battery. Flip the battery and see if it turns on that time. If it still doesn't turn on, one of your connections might not be a strong enough connection. Trace them back, rewrap them, add solder. Find the fault until your light turns on. Also, just in case you were concerned, that's not blood on his hands. He was staining some wood red. I promise. Now that the vaccine side effects have worn off and my hands are back to normal, it is time to finish this thing off. I'm just adding a little bit of super glue to the top of the switch that gets pressed up against the top of my light base. And I'm going to push it in through the hole that I cut for it and secure it in place. You don't have to use super glue here. I'm not great with glue all the time and choosing the right glue. So hopefully super glue holds over time. If you know of a better glue that works, I don't know, maybe E6000 would work better. Uh, go ahead and use that. Once I figured out how to fit all of the components up inside the base of my light, I wanted to close it off with something. 
So I took a piece of matte board and just drew the outline of the base of the light onto the board and then cut it down so that it would fit up inside so that if you're taking it in and out of the diorama, all of those wires in the battery compartment aren't falling out. I just used a brown alcohol ink marker to color this piece of matte board so that if any little bit of it showed when it was in the diorama, it wouldn't look glaringly different from the painted books. I didn't want to glue that bottom piece in permanently because at some point I expect I will need to change the battery on the light and as I already found from the previous one I made, Sometimes electrical connections don't stay connected the way you want them to. So I wanted to be able to take it out to replace or repair the light as needed. I initially thought about gluing in one side with Fabri-Tac, but then I remembered that I have rubber cement. Rubber cement is perfect because it will hold it in place. But if I need to pop that piece of mat board out, it will do so easily without damaging the mat board or the base of the light. I just glued three sides of the mat board in so that I can easily stick a small screwdriver or tweezers under it and flip it out. The last thing I needed to do to finish it off is glue the little Bob the skull head in place on top of the light. I used Fabri-Tac to do this. Again, I don't know if this was the best choice. Go ahead, use super glue E6000 whatever you have that you think will work. Uh, my Bob the Skull is a 3D printed model, so it's plastic on paper, plastic, I don't know. I, somebody teach me about glue, please. And here's what the finished light looks like. Bob the Skull all lit up. Now, I know some of y'all are on happy with me. You came here for diamond painting and what is this crap that I'm putting up right now? And I get it. If you go to McDonald's and order french fries, you don't want to get a baked potato in your order. But I'm all about crafting. I always have been. And I want to share with you guys just the joy and peace of mind that you get by exploring creativity. So hopefully you'll stick with me and if you enjoyed this project that we did today, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit the bell to get notifications when I post new content. Now I'm going to try and do that twice a week, but don't come after me with pitchforks and torches if I don't. Y'all, my mental health is fragile, so be nice. If you're actually listening to this and you watch this video all the way through, then for the love of all things holy, please give me a thumbs up. You have no idea how much it helps content creators out when you interact with their video a little bit. So give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs down, leave me a comment. Just don't call me any names, please. <laughs> and I would really appreciate it. Thanks for spending some time with me. And until next time, stay sane.